بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم Every person needs a role model and who better than those who are close to Almighty Allah In the name of Allah they entirely merciful, they especially merciful. Choices, peace, blessings and salutations be upon his beloved and our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is the master of every nation, the light of illumination. Indeed he possesses the highest station. His beauty has no equation. His smile is beyond imagination. His birth is the greatest celebration. Praising him has no limitation. Seeing him is elation. May his abode be our final destination. O oh, mercy to all of creation. Our only cure is loving you our greatest medication. You are our salvation. Therefore, allow us to send our salutation. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad nuri al-anwar wa sirri al-asrar wa Sayyid al-abrar. Respected listeners, honorable host, elders, brothers, mothers, sisters, innocent youth, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Insha'Allah, I will trace back from the present day up to the days of the Holy Quran with regards to humans having role models and its importance. I use the word trace back, qassasa, which means in the Arabic language, trace back. Almighty Allah mentions in Surah Kaf, verse 64, regarding Nabi Musa alayhi salam and the young boy. When the Musa alayhi salam and the young boy traced their way back exactly, meaning they followed the exact route on their return to get to where they came from. Just like Hansel and Gretel, they drop breadcrumbs or bread pieces on the floor so that they may follow it on their return. Qasasa also means stories. Almighty Allah mentions in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 176. So mention the stories so that they may ponder. So we need to ask ourselves, why was the iman of the kids of the companions so strong? Why were the kids of the companions so powerful mentally and physically? And the reason for this was because they took the advice of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they taught their children the stories of the Prophets. They taught their children the stories of the Holy Quran. The companions and our pious predecessors, they did not teach their children stories about Goldilocks and the three bears, Red Riding Hood or Robin Hood. No. But indeed, they taught their kids lessons from the perfect religion of Islam. They taught their kids lessons from the glorious Quran. They taught their kids stories of the Anbiya alayhi salam. Once, a teacher was teaching a lesson about whales, and he asked his class, he asked the students, who has any information or who knows anything about whales? 
So there was this one young girl and she raised her hand and said, did I know about whales? And she was excited to say did she know about whales. So the teacher asked her, what do you know about whales? And she said that Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, he was swallowed by a whale. The teacher laughed and asked her, where did she hear the story of a person being swallowed by a whale? And this young girl said that she heard the story from the Holy Quran. Every night before going to bed, her father would read her a story from the Quran. And this is one of the stories that he read from the Quran. The teacher told her that the Quran was just telling a fairy tale. And it is physically impossible for a human to be swallowed by a whale because mammals have small throats. This young girl responded that Almighty Allah will never lie to us. And Almighty Allah mentions in the Holy Quran that Prophet Yunus was swallowed by a whale. This teacher became very upset and the teacher said that Allah in the Quran is false. So the Iman of this young girl said that when I go to heaven, I will ask Prophet Yunus salam if he was swallowed by a whale. The teacher became angry and upset and replied that what if Prophet Yunus is not in heaven? The young girl replied, then you must ask him. So Jamaatul Muslimin, it is said to say that in the present era, many kids have role models who are not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many kids have role models who are not Islamically upright. Many of the youth of today are following role models like Cristiano Ronaldo, or they are following actors, they are following musicians, athletes, but none of them are following those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask a child on the life or the history of a athlete or a specific actor, they will know everything about the history. They will know how many times they were married, how many times they got divorced, how many children they have, every single thing about them. But when you ask the youth about the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it is said that they do not know anything about the history of the companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you ask a child who is Cristiano Ronaldo, he would be able to tell you. But if you ask a child who is Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, then he is shocked. He's just, oh, it's a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he doesn't know anything further about the companion of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is about time that we rekindle the brilliant torch of bravery and steadiness in the hearts of ourselves with lessons drawn from the faith and struggle of our pious predecessors. When we see why children are following role models which are not Islamically upright, then to a certain degree we blame the parents. Because as parents, it is our duty to teach, to educate, and instill in our children the love for Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So may Almighty Allah save us and our kids from bad role models. May Almighty Allah guide us so that we may follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the beginning, I said, we will trace back from the present day up to the days of the Holy Quran with regards to humans having role models and its importance. 
So inshallah, we're going to look what does men say, what does science say regarding role models, and what does Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say regarding role models. According to modern day science, it is a known fact that every individual, every single person craves for a role model. Every single person wants a role model. Every person needs a role model. So if we go to the study of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, we find that experts say humans follow role models and not just mere theories. And now when we come to the Holy Quran, we find that Almighty Allah tells us we must follow a role model when He says in Surah Luqman verse 15, وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ And follow the way of those who turn to me. We are always in need of guidance. And Allah commands us to take guidance from who? From those who turn to Him. From those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From those who are constantly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From those who conceal their good actions just as they conceal their evil actions. So from the above verse, we can identify in which direction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to find a role model. But not just any role model. We need to find a role model who is Islamically upright. We need to find a role model who is submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to find a role model who is in submission to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we are looking for a role model, then we should make sure that this person is in total servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Azab verse 21, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That indeed for you in the Messenger of Allah is the best role model. There is no better role model than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And Allah carries on in this verse when he says, لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ For him who hopes in Allah and the last day, وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And remembers Allah in abundance. So when we're looking for role models, we have to make sure that they have certain qualities. The companions looked at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their role model. And their students look at them as their role model. And so forth until the model of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached us today. So with the information that we have established here today, we know that we need to follow a role model. We know that if we want to be successful in life, then we have to follow someone, but that person needs to be Islamically upright. Now the challenge that most of us face is how do we find a good role model? There are so many people that looks good, but they are bad. There are so many people that we trust and they breach our trust. There are so many people that look like they are a good role model, but they are not. So inshallah, I'm going to mention to you a few aspects or a few qualities that will assist one in looking for a good role model. So the first thing is time management. When we find someone or when we are looking for someone to be a role model, we should see that this person has time management. This person, he is able to manage his own time. And if this person is not able to manage his own time, then how will he be able to manage our time? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْأَصْرْ By the time, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرْ Man is in a state of loss. So if someone is unable to manage their own time appropriately, they will not be able to manage yours. And if one is in a state of loss, how will he be able to guide you? How will he be able to take you closer to Almighty Allah? Number two, conviction in Almighty Allah. Find someone who is Allah conscious. Find someone who occupies 
his time in the development and preservation of his conviction in Almighty Allah. Because without true faith and certainty in Almighty Allah, our taqwa cannot be fully developed. So if you choose to follow someone who is not Allah conscious, then you run the risk of not only falling into sin, but of losing your identity altogether. So when we say Allah conscious, it means that whenever you want to do a certain action, then you should ask yourself, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with the outcome of that action? Whenever you want to do an action or say something, you must ask yourself, will Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be happy with that action? And if your answer is yes, then you know that it is a good action, it's a righteous action. And if your answer is no, then you know that it is a bad and evil action. But this is Allah consciousness. When you, your conscience always asks you, is Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going to be happy with me or not? The third thing is righteous activity. Find someone who has good character. Many times when we speak of righteous activity, when we speak of righteous actions, then the first thing that comes to our mind is to perform salah, to pay zakah, to give charity, to fast in the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, all of the above are good actions. But when we speak of righteous actions, then we are speaking about the character of one another. We are speaking of having good character. So in today's time, a lot of people, when you speak of righteous actions, they say, okay, Subhanallah, this guy, he has a big juba, he has a big turban, so he's a righteous person. Or he's wearing a big ring on his finger, he's a righteous person. Or sometimes they say, oh, this person is from a certain race, he's an Arab, so he's a good person. Or he's a Pakistani or an Indian, he's a good person. So based on race or the place from where someone comes. So this is not what we use as a criteria to see what is righteous actions. However, righteous activity is much more broader than what we think it is. Righteous activity is in the way we speak to one another, in the way we treat people. Righteous actions is how we conduct ourselves on a daily basis, how we speak to our domestics at home, how we speak to the people that works with us, how do we speak to our parents, how do we speak to our children. This is righteous activity, the way we conduct ourselves every single day. The fourth aspect of quality when finding and looking for a spiritual guide, when looking for a role model, is truthfulness. Find someone who is truthful, someone who always speaks the truth. Because if you find someone who lies all the time, then this person will be deceiving you and he will be taking you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of taking you towards Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will start lying so much and justifying his lies that he will, instead of teaching you about Allah, he will teach you how to lie and how to justify your lies as well. So instead of taking you closer and closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will take you further and further away. Instead of making you a servant of Almighty Allah, he will make you his servant by lying and covering up his lies all the time. Inshallah, I'm going to mention one more quality that we should find when looking for a spiritual guide. And that is the fifth quality, patience. Find someone who is patient, someone who does not expect instant gratification. We are living in a time where a lot of people are only concerned of instant gratification. For example, if we are on Facebook and someone is reading posts and they like someone else's post <clears throat> and you know they read your post but they never like your post, you become upset, you become angry. Why? Because of instant gratification. We want that the more likes we get. So we're not worried what actions we do to get these likes. Sometimes people are even disobeying the command of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are not dressing appropriately. People are posting wrong things on Instagram and Facebook just so that they can get more likes, so that more people can like them. And this is what we need to find in a spiritual guide, that they need to be patient. They don't need to be looking for this instant gratification. For 
they know that whatever we plant in the dunya, we will see our harvest in the akhirah. So there is no need for us to look for our harvest in this dunya. May Almighty Allah bless us with good role models who will take us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are currently facing a testing time with the virus, coronavirus, the COVID-19. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to guide us, and to show us the way. I will conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me and you the strength and ability to follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I conclude my talk by saying, مَا قُلْتُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَمِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That if I said anything good, it is indeed from Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا قُلْتُ مِنْ خَطَائٍ مِنْ إِنْدِ نَفْسِ وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ If I said anything bad, it is indeed a shortcoming from myself and the whisperings of shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me 